Hi, I'm Dennis, and welcome to the studio. We're gonna continue with our vertical clamping table and how to define the zeros or the origins for the components that we are going to run on the long mill. One of the problems with finding the origin for the vertical clamping is that we use parts that are, you know, fairly wide, but could be fairly thin. And using the touch plate, the problem with the touch plate is the distance from this stop to this stop here. As you can see, the piece will slide all the way through. So we can't use the actual part to find the origin. Now, if we wanna use the touch plate to find the origin on the vertical clamping table, you're gonna to have to make a jig. So in this case, it's just a simple L. I've got front labeled. So the inside edge here goes against the vertical table of the long mill. The top piece, this will reference off the top surface of the long mill's bed. I have a 25 on here because this is how far above the bed I want my component to be when I do the machining. Now, if you notice on this jig, I've got a little lip here. This is to allow the touch plate to reference from, when this is on the machine, the left side and the top of the part here. So now I'm able to find the origin of the component in the software and on the long mill to execute my cuts. If we were to look on the Cartesian grid, this is our X axis and our Y axis. So any movement over here will be X plus, Y plus, going this way would be X negative, and here would be Y negative. Most of the time we're gonna be programming in this quadrant, but when we're creating components for the vertical table, we're gonna change that. So when we're programming for the parts on the vertical table, we are going to be creating a part here, which is in the X plus Y negative grid. So all of our parts, because the way they're referenced, so think of this as the inside of my vertical table here, these are my edge stops. I don't want this point here to be the origin. I want this. This one won't change once we find out what that is. So when we're creating the parts in whatever software you're doing, you're gonna create components in the X plus Y negative quadrant. We've got the top facing up. The front is here, our 25 millimeters is here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna set it on the top. We are going to slide it across until it reaches our dead stops here on the left-hand side. Now what we're able to do is come in using the touch plate to find the origin of the part. So once we have our probe on the fixture, we're set to probe, we're gonna check for continuity, and we have it, and now we're gonna start the probing cycle. As you can see, the machine has found the origin, which is against the face here, and against the edge stops here. Now on the screen, you can actually see that the X is 135.2 and the Y is 114.03. So you may want to write those numbers down for your machine so that you don't lose them, so you don't have to check origin all the time, but it's probably not a bad idea to do that. The Z doesn't really matter because we're going to be switching out our tool frequently and pin stops aren't going to change. Okay, now you can see I have no material in the vertical clamping. I have all my clamps off. What I need, once I've found this origin here, is I need to know the distance from this end stop 
to this edge stop here. And in my case, that is 939 millimeters. What I've done is I've installed this piece of particle board here. I've cut this to length as best I could to 939 millimeters. If you remember on this jig, we had a 25 millimeter height here for how much my part is gonna extend past the table when I'm using the vertical clamping. Now I also have a stop block, a stop gauge that when I reference on the table and I put it over, that my part here is now 25 millimeters above. And this is what I'm gonna be using to bring my material up to the correct height. Here's our Cartesian grid again. It's just a little bit offset. So if you remember, I said that the distance between my end stops were 939 millimeters. So what I've done is I've created a rectangle in the X plus Y minus quadrant. This is the distance between my two stops. This is 25.47, that is the thickness of the material that I have in there. So what I've done is I've just created this rectangle. I've taken that and I've drawn it in Vetric. So what I've done with that now is I've then created a offset of two millimeters towards the inside. So what should happen now is I found the origin. I'm gonna make a contour cut all the way around the, the component, two millimeters wide. So when I measure the distance from this edge to this edge, I should measure two millimeters. The distance from this edge to this edge should be two millimeters. And from here to here should also be two millimeters. This out here, I'm less concerned about, but if it's two millimeters, that's okay, but I may have thickness variations in my part. This is why I always wanna make sure I have, I'm using the proper reference edges when I'm doing the machine. Now in this case, when I run this, I will have the dust collector off just to reduce the amount of noise that we have. So now we are going to run the component. In a previous video, I talked about reference edges. So reference edges become really important. If you notice, I've got an X on this face and an X on this face. So what I'm going to do is I need to, rem and I'll always put a mark on there and pencil, as a reference edge. So the one X on the edge goes against my stops. The other X goes against the flat surface of the vertical table. Whatever width variation there is here or wherever thickness variation doesn't matter because if I'm doing a tenon on either end, the inside is going to be my reference, okay? I don't want to be taking parts running it on this side, and then flipping it this way. I wanna be taking the part from this side. So again, if I have my reference edges here, my reference edges, and I turn it to the other end to do this reference edge. So I'm rotating the part as opposed to flipping it. Because if I have a variation in doing that, I may, I, I'm not gonna create square, a square piece of furniture. In the template that I'm using, I'm going to be creating a tenon. So this would be looking at the tenon like this and like this. So what I'm programming is the top part of this tenon. So I'm going to draw this tenon in here. And the easiest way to do this is to create the tenon here in this quadrant at the origin of the template. And later on in the next video, I'll show you how I'm programming to cut this tenon. 
So once I create this tenon over here, I'm gonna mirror this geometry, the tenon shape and the outside boundary of my component around this mirror line so that it creates another component on the other side. So if we take the reference edge again, what we actually have is we're using, this is a reference edge. We are using this as a reference edge. So what happens when we take that component after we're done machining and flipping it, we are using the same reference edges so that any variation is all gonna be to one edge and to one face. So in this video, I showed you how to find origin on your new vertical table and how I'm gonna be creating a template in whatever software I'm using to create mirror images of a component so that I have a left and a right component. In the next video, I'll show you how we're gonna be doing the programming of those tenons, one for the left and one for the right and using the proper reference edges. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button at the bottom of the video and I'll see you in the studio next time.